Hello Cinematech Geeks, this is James Gardner back with another episode and today I wanted to talk to you about automation and the future of automation. But if we want to talk about the future, we probably need to talk about the past. Now traditionally in a cinema, the automation was basically revolving around contact, contact closure devices, similar to what you see here. Basically, when a certain time in the feature occurred, there would be a contact closure, turning like pushing a button, turn the lights down, change the audio, etc. And those contact closures would be sent to the audio processor, to the light control system, to basically make the auditorium change to the to the settings it needs to be for the certain parts, certain time. Now, of course, now we're in DCI land, and everything's basically become IT infrastructure and there's networks everywhere and it's a basically a new world. And so what's going on with automation? Well, automation predominantly has changed to IP-based automation or messages going over your network. The projectors in DCI land are predominantly controlled over IP. You can control them through contact closure, but pretty much no one really uses that because the IP is there and you're using it anyway because the... the um, DCI player needs to talk over to the projector with IP to establish its security protocol, so it's always going to be there, there's always going to be a network. So IP is basically the future. Everything's pretty much going IP uh, in, in the automation realm of the cinema. It makes it much simpler because there's one wire for everything, but with IP there becomes, you know, complexity. Um, it's a lot more complicated. The, there's in, traditionally, there's a wire going here to there. You know what it does, etc. In IP, it's a little bit more um, virtual. You ha, you know, you're not exactly sure what happens because it's just happening all over the wire in the network or the cloud. So we need to be more conscious of how we set these things up and how they work, and be a little bit more clever about it. But let's talk about some of the examples I'm going to show here because still IP. Um, automation still has some drawbacks and some um, little faults that sometimes you may still want to use a more uh, closer to the to the metal type automation system. So here right now I've got um, one of our Cinex is the product I, I, I develop here with a, a digital company I work for talking to three different devices. We've got uh, close to the metal IO box here which is connected to a USB bus of this. We've got a sound processor, of course, we're talking to it over IP, similar to what we'd be doing to a DCI projector or a projector these days. And then we've got a very common, inexpensive um, I.O. device here. It can be used for serial and over the network, which is what I'm going to show you today. Uh, this is a very cost-effective, very low-powered, it doesn't get hot at all, probably very reliable, and it's very industrial, as you can see here. And very common in many parts of the world for use with their DCI projectors. First of all, let's talk about <coughs> excuse me. Why would you you'd want to use more like a closer to the metal, connected directly to some sort of bus? Like this is a USB bus type device. Now, the reason you may want to do that is because basically this device is polled a thousand times a second. So when I want a message to go, it's as accurate. It's very accurate. When I want something to fire, it is firing exactly the same time every time. There is no delays. It's connected directly to the bus and directly to the program, so it's very accurate. Now that's very important for some people. If you're doing a theme ride or, or anything that requires time accurate external control of any device, you want to go for something probably a little bit more closer to the metal, like a, a industrial uh, contact closure device here. Now I just quickly show you this thing working. Nice industrial unit. Uh, it's got little LEDs here which gives you an idea of it working and I'll just send a message and it's basically t turning the lights on and off down here and they're very quickly you can see one message going in going straight to the next one. There's no delay. Bang, bang, bang. It's very fast. Next let's have a look at um, we've got the audio processor here. Now I can control it through here. You can basically see there's a little bit of delay here from the message when I push that and the time that changes. You can also change to the cinema, you can hear it change, etc. Traditionally, that's very commonly how it works. Because you must admit, in a cinema, the, 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 timing, the timing of those auto messages, automation messages going through is not very, uh, it's not very that important. It can come, you know, a couple of seconds in and out. It basically needs to go in around here and, you know, change the audio around here as long as it's within a second or so. Finally, I want to cover this device here. This is a common device used around the world um, for IO, IO contact closure. 
via IP connectivity. So it's got a little IP uh, internet cable going in here or ethernet cable going in here and the power cable at the front. See it's very industrial, it comes with industrial connectors that won't fall out etc. Now this device wasn't really designed for IP control, it actually does it but um, it's really designed for the serial control and it works quite well doing that and it has been a uh, you know it's, it's a very very small processor in there it dealing with the connect connections and disconnections and the the overhead of the processing for an IP connectivity that really does slow it down considerably and so much so I just wanted to show you uh, exactly the the um, problems that it does have so let's just send it a message there you go now if I send it multiple messages they do eventually come through, but it takes its time. Well, is that a bad thing? Well, not really. If we really only needed to be roughly, you know, a couple of seconds uh, in control, then it's, it'll do the job, and it's inexpensive, and it's IP-based and reliable. So, as you can see here, they all work, but they have a little bit of pluses and minuses about how they do work. Um, so we need to really take that into consideration when you're designing an automation system for the type of system you're going to put in. So different devices will be better used in different areas. But in general, a device like that is fine for a cinema. But if you're doing uh, a more of a ride or a theme or etc., a theme park, you probably want something more close to the metal. But let's also talk about, I'm going to get even more geeky here, and we're going to talk about how the IP messaging works on the network. Now... You have to be quite careful about IP controlling control protocols. I'm going to get a little bit deeper into how these sort of things work. Now, there's different ways to set up IP control protocols to devices. Now, for example, in this device, um, this device can be you can connect to it and keep the connection open and control it, and the the reaction time does improve considerably. But there's a problem with that type of uh, implementation, which a lot of people seem to overlook. If I did connect to this device and kept the socket open, uh, basically the, the connection active in memory from the, from the control device to the, to, the, to the client device or the device being controlled, if for some reason um, that connection uh, would have a heartbeat on it to keep it open, for example. If, for example, though, that connection died because, for example, the switch was turned off and turned back on and uh, the connection between the two devices was lost, that may be, that occurrence or that error could cause a loss in a message if the right circumstances happen. Actually, that's just not really usable in a 100% must be reliable type of cinema automation system. And that's why we have to use what I call you have to connect disconnect type of protocols with cinema type automation. It does, it can be a little bit faster if you use persistent connections, like I'm saying, but uh, in my opinion, been doing this for quite some time. That's the reliability aspects. Uh, it's better probably just not to do that. Uh, the, you can actually uh, add other protocols on top to make it more reliable using those sort of protocols. But then again, you're starting to get into device driver implementations. And really, you don't want to get go there because really, at the end of the day, uh, this device may last for a couple of years, then may be outdated. Uh, develop, you know, the information about developing or connecting to it is then questionable. If it just has an open socket-based protocol with a simple connection, disconnection te technique, then it doesn't matter how old it is or where it came from, you basically can know you can plug any control device into it, any control device with simple um, scripting languages. And that's how we use our devices. And it will control any device like this or anything that takes a typical socket connection, disconnection um, protocol, it's very scripting, you just script the hex that you need to send down to it. And pretty much that's the future for automation in cinema in most situations. If you just send a need, need to send a message to a device, and depending on if it's time critical or not, it, it changes the way you might do the implementation. If you do need very time synced and critically timed implementations, you probably need to go the extra step and write and the, and the actual device or a device driver would probably be needed to talk to it to ensure the speed of connecting to the device. But tr traditionally, uh, an open connection, send message, disconnect uh, is the way to do it. That way, for example, because you are opening the connection, if you do not get the connection, you know the message didn't get through and you can 
very quickly and you can pass an error flag down or etc or, or other sort of aspects to to tell you what's going on so that that's the the the, the current stat on on automation in the cinema. I imagine it's similar to that in other areas, in home automation, etc. Everything's pretty much going to the network. Uh, but in terms of industrial, reliability is everything. So you need to be careful about how you implement your automation. But that's pretty much what's happening in the cinema auditoriums. It's all basically going over your switch. Now, finally, let's talk about one last problem there, is that switch now becomes one, you know, a single point of failure, which is quite, quite a major point of failure. And yeah, that is, that is quite an issue. Uh, unfortunately though, that uh, so many things are now relying on that switch that um, if it does go down, uh, usually it's gonna bring so much down that, it, that it's, very, you know, it's, it's not really an issue because if the switch is down, there's so many problems with the cinema in terms of other fu functionality that the cinema may as well be completely down and has to be replaced before you go online. So basically, keep a couple of spare switches around is the answer. Um, and that's what people are doing. And that's what we would advise to some people in sort of in my installations. Uh, so yeah, that's automation. That's a bit of information about uh, where it's going and how it's, how it's trending, especially in this part of the world. So keep uh, watching Cinematech Geek and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.